It is the lingering effects of the pandemic. It is um, bottlenecks in the supply chain. It is the fact that we are a globalized economy that um, we began many, many years ago with a production um, philosophy that the best thing to do was to increase efficiency, right? That everybody wanted to manufacture things on a just-in-time basis. And so we don't have a lot of spare capacity. We don't build up huge inventories. We don't leave a lot of slack in the system. <laughs> and we spread out the supply chain in search of the lowest cost producer globally and we concentrated production in key industries in key parts of the world so if there are problems in south korea and taiwan with semiconductor production you just don't have a fallback to get manufacturers to produce chips so that you can complete uh, automobile production and so forth. So there's a lot going on. And so, Stephanie, you're, you're probably the, the public intellectual most closely associated with modern monetary theory. And, and for, uh, you know, a very long time, whenever MMT, you know, discussed deficits, debt, and the, li the limits thereof, the question came down to, to inflation. You would, you know, and, and you, you, would, you would always say, look, uh, you know, Everything is accounting until you get just, until you get to a place where you're seeing prices rise, and then you have policy tools that you bring into place to deal with uh, you know pr price stability. Uh, here we are talking about inflation, but not debt-driven, not deficit-driven inflation. You know, pr price hikes driven by real shortages and, and supply chain uh, problems. So, how 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 do MMT economists think think about this this question? Yeah. Well, so you're you're right. For from the very beginning, MMT has centered inflation risk. That is the relevant risk, and we have focused on the productive capacity of the economy. And so the argument has always been: Can the government afford to spend more on things like infrastructure, childcare, healthcare, education? Yes, there isn't a financial constraint, but there are limits and there are constraints, and we are witnessing those constraints play out across the world now. So it is very difficult to find uh, people to do uh, childcare today. It is. La encontré porque te estaba la paellera agarrada entre mi entre las piedras de chipiona de faro y cuando entro en el restaurante me ve el cocinero con una paellera y a dónde la vende paella. difficult to hire um, to hire drivers to move merchandise from port to retail uh, factory. So there are constraints. There are real limits in our economy. Our productive capacity is under great strain, not just domestically, but globally. So what do you do about it? I mean, I think what people understand now is that the usual way of fighting inflation, which is to turn to the central bank and say, this is your job. You fix it. What is Jerome Powell? What is the Federal Reserve? What are other central banks supposed to do to deal with bottlenecks in the supply chain that are driving the cost of tennis shoes higher or semiconductor chips? The answer is not much. So what do you do? You deal with
how long does inflation have to run above your target before the Fed decides maybe it's not so transitory? Well, um, first of all, the, the, the test that we've articulated, I think, clearly has been met now. Uh, you know, you, you're absolutely right. Inflation has run well above 2% for long enough that uh, if you look back a few years, inflation averages 2%. So I think, I think we can say that that, that is it was not the case going into this episode. It had been many years since we had inflation at 2%. Um, so I think the word transitory has different meanings to different people. To, to many, it carries a time, a sense of, uh, of short-lived. We, we tend to, 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 to ha use it to mean that, that it won't leave a permanent mark uh, in, the, in the form of higher inflation. I think it's, it's probably a good time to retire that, that uh, word and try to explain more clearly what we mean. Do things immediately to alleviate all of the strains in the system. Investing in infrastructure, dealing with the kinds of bottlenecks at the ports and, well, and roads and bridges and shipping. I mean, those are longer term, but even child care, the investments in child care will help alleviate some of the labor shortages. Right. You're right. Some of these bottlenecks at ports, I mean, my understanding is uh, many American ports, unlike ports elsewhere in the world, don't run 24 hours a day. They don't run on the, on weekends or on Sundays. They're, you know, they're, uh, they're under running under capacity. And, and so, you know, some uh, 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 companies are considering charting. They're chartering private, um, uh, smaller uh, vessels. They're going to look at uh, smaller ports other than the main ones uh, because of these issues. So those are worker issues, right? Some of them are, but you also have, you know, it's not. These bottlenecks at ports, I mean, my understanding is uh, many American ports, unlike ports elsewhere in the world, don't run 24 hours a day. They don't run on, the, on weekends or on Sundays. They're, you know, they're, uh, they're under, running under capacity. And, and so, you know, some. Uh, 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 companies are considering charting. They're chartering private, um, uh, smaller uh, vessels. They're going to look at uh, smaller ports other than the main ones uh, because of these issues. So those are worker issues, right? Some of them are, but you also have, you know, it's not just here in the U.S., though. I mean, you've got slowdowns in other parts of the world. You've got uh, things backing up in China. And, and so we're, we have a lot of problems that are fueling this inflationary pressure and these bottlenecks. And so to the extent that some companies have the balance sheets that allow them to go uh, private and to, to do more to bring goods to, to consumers, they will do that. But, you know, the big guys are eating up a lot of the space on the container ships, and that's making it very difficult for many smaller producers. this battle is over, the world will know that few stood against many. Before this battle is over, the world will know that few stood against many.